Hey sports fans, Neil here with the Fix Yourself channel. I got a, it's actually a 2003 Club Car DS. Now, the problem I'm having with it here, when I first step on the gas pedal, nothing happens. You step on the gas pedal twice, then then she'll move. But a lot of times when you first step on the gas pedal, the engine cranks over, but it doesn't actually start. Now, after looking around on the internet, I have found that it's most likely micro switches, which is kind of a weird thing. Because um, you think of micro something really small, can't be seen by the human eye, you know, like a microorganism or a microscope or a microphone or a microwave oven. But in this case, these micro switches, they aren't actually that small. And about the size of any other switch. But nonetheless, it's called a micro switch. Now, we're kind of departing from the way I normally do things. Usually, I just let stuff slide until it doesn't work at all, you know. And uh, if I'm lucky, the problem will compound itself and kind of snowball and make a whole bunch of other problems and make it a lot more difficult and expensive to repair than if I would have just got on the job right away. But, these switches were pretty inexpensive. They were less than six bucks on, online. And uh, I understand they're pretty easy to uh, get to and replace. So that is what we're going to do. That is going to be the focus of today's video. Okay, well, you know on just about any repair video or service manual, I'll say before doing anything on a piece of equipment, you know, like, checking the tire pressure or changing the oil you should disconnect the battery terminal right well in this case today we're actually going to follow that advice we're going to remove the negative battery terminal because we're working on electrics now to gain access uh, to this after we remove that uh, negative battery terminal we will disconnect this air intake hose because that's in the way of the cover we have to remove it we have to take out this uh, screw it's got a 5 16 head and then you just push on this upper corners of this box uh, top and then I'll come right off and our micro switches are underneath that all right we got the cover of that uh, fuse box removed and we can see our micro switches right now just kind of zoom in on them and there's just two uh, small machine screws holding them on you remove those two nuts there and I would recommend that you remove the top one first and then unplug these uh, wires one at a time and plug them into your new switch as you go along. That way uh, you won't forget which one goes where. So take the, like I say, we're going to take the nuts off. We'll remove that top switch. We'll unplug the wires from the old switch and plug them onto the new switch. All right, here's our old switch here. And then our new switch is right above it, and they do appear to be exactly the same. Um, this takes two switches. I've already installed the top one. And, by the way, the nuts that held them switches on were uh, quarter inch, okay? And what I did is I unplugged the wires one at a time from the old switch and plugged them onto the new switch. And then the top switch, that center terminal, is not used. So now we'll repeat the exact same thing on this lower switch. Now for those of you who got all ahead of yourselves and couldn't resist just tearing into this, and you just unplugged all the wires, I'm going to say this for your benefit. On the top switch, the orange wire goes to the terminal that's closest to the side that has the finger on it for activating it. Okay. And the green wire goes to the uh, terminal on the exact opposite uh, side of the switch as that finger, okay? On the bottom switch, the black wire, which I bet is a ground wire, goes to the terminal that's closest to this uh, finger, okay? And the white wires, the two white wires, which I bet are the kill switch wires, um, they go to the terminal that is on the opposite side of the switch from the activating finger. Now it's just a matter of sliding it over these two studs here, the two switches, and putting on our nuts and washers, and our golf cart should work really good. 
Alrighty, we got our bottom switch slid over those two studs. And I thought I'd point out too, to slide, in order to slide these down, to clear these, this cam that activates them, you have to depress that activation finger while you slide your switches down onto those studs. I'll show you what I mean here. Okay, there's my switch. See, it won't go down because it's hitting that cam, but I just depress that finger and she slides all the way down. Now it's just a matter of putting those little lock washers and the nuts on those studs. And then the job will be pretty much complete with the exception of putting our cover back on and our air intake hose back on and of course our negative battery terminal. All right, sports fans, I got her all put back together here. So the next sound you're gonna hear is either gonna be this golf cart running or me swearing. Contact. God damn it! All right, sports fans, I went from a golf cart that ran pretty good, occasionally you had to step on the gas pedal twice to make her go, to a cart that won't run at all. So if you like this video, I hope you like, share, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, okay? I shouldn't have been so cocky, I shouldn't have put her all back together, I should have test run it. I'm sure there's a little dinking around I gotta do to get everything just perfect. We'll figure it out. Okay, sports fans, got her all taken apart again here, and I have found out that when I depress the gas pedal and then hold the finger on that bottom switch in so it doesn't activate, um, the cart runs just fine. So, what I did is I looked at my other switches that I took out, and I noticed, and this is kind of odd. The first thing I think that is odd is that both of these old switches have the same part number on it, even though one has three terminals and one only has two. And I maybe mean, I was in a little too much of a hurry when I went to put this thing together because I noticed that the uh, top switch, the center terminal, wasn't used. So I just assumed the bottom switch was the same way, but look, that only has one terminal. and. It's not because the other ones broke off, okay? So my guess is I can make this thing run okay if I switch that to the center terminal, okay? And it makes sense to me because I bet with this terminal here is uh, one has current flowing through it. It makes continuity through the switch when that finger is depressed, and one makes continuity when the uh, switch is open. So... I think on the kill switch it would have been this bottom one, there's only two. So when this when it was when the gas pedal is depressed and that activates that finger, it probably actually opens the circuit, the kill circuit. That's my guess. That's what I guess. Ground plugged in there, killed plugged in there. So I will just take the uh, wire off on this bottom switch from that terminal where I said it should go to that center terminal, and I think that'll make her work. Let's find out. One other thing here, I'm back to my old ways. I'm not disconnecting the uh, battery cable when I'm working on it because I have to immediately do some tests and well, I'm going to be hooking it back up anyway. But at any rate, if you want to have some kind of safety here, uh, there's one fuse on these Club Car DSs. It's a 10 amp. You pull that out and that pretty much eliminates all the electrics on one of these, go one of these golf carts. So that's kind of a, at least a half-ass safety measure. Alrighty, now, I got my top switch removed, okay, now we're looking at the bottom switch here, and I'm betting that if I remove this wire here from this terminal and plug it into that terminal, I bet the golf cart will work just fine, and you should take me up on that bet because I've already made one screw up in this video. Alright, so, now on the bottom switch we got the two white wires, which I believe are the wires that lead to the kill switch, they go to the terminal opposite of the activation finger and the black wire which I believe is a ground wire goes to the center terminal. Alright sports fans I got her put together here good enough so it'll run anyway theoretically so just like last time the next sound you're gonna hear is either a running golf cart or me swearing. Alright contact
right, it seems to work in both forward and reverse. We'll put it, actually, we'll put the thing back together and get it on the ground and see how she does. Oh, great. Look who just showed up. You know, once I got this thing put back together here and outside and actual using it, uh, it seems to work just fine. I seems to take off right away, so uh, I think we can call this one a success. Uh, it's a pretty easy job to do. Just pay a little more attention to it than I did when you're plugging those wires onto those switch terminals. So. Those switches were less than $6 a piece, so I just bought both of them. I believe either one or the other was bad. Um, but they were so cheap, I, I didn't even want to spend the time trying to determine it. I just bought two new switches and replaced them. So it's running good now. Cost me less than 12 bucks to fix, and it was pretty easy. If you were doing this job and you didn't have to video it, you could easily get this job done in less than a half an hour. So, if you liked what you saw here, I appreciate it. If you liked, shared, subscribed, you know, do everything it takes to make this the number one channel on YouTube. And until next time, we'll see you here on the Fix Yourself channel.